Hi, I wanted to show you how to calculate the rate law, how to determine the rate law when you are given experimental data. Um, for this, I wanted to show you mathematically how to do it. Some of you are going to watch this and you'll go, mm, I can do that in my head. Watch the next video on determining the rate law by inspection. But for now, I think it's well worth your time. Watch this to figure out the math and then it will make more sense if you can do it in your head. And if you can't do it in your head, it's fine. I actually prefer to do the math. I, I still do the math. It's because I like it. It's kind of like candy. So let's do this together. You be given a problem where um, you have an equation and then they give you a set of data. Um, and in the data, they're going to run uh, different experiments, maybe three to six experiments, something like that. Um, and then they're going to give you concentrations. Now these are the initial concentrations, okay? These will be the initial concentrations. Uh, what you begin with, so for example, I would begin with 0.05 moles of this methyl acetate will react with 0.05 moles of the hydroxide. This right here is our initial rate. That's going to be the initial rate. And the unit on this is molarity per second. Uh, so that tells us that this is be being consumed at 0 0.00034 molar per second, moles per liter per second. Um, and remember, that could have been written mole per liter times second. Same thing, same thing. Um, now, our task is to find the rate law, to find the rate equation. So the first thing that I always do is go ahead and write down as much as I know about the rate law. Well, this much we know. Rate depends on the reactants, and each of those reactants are going to be raised to an order. It looks like this. Rate will equal the rate constant, K, times, uh, we're going to have concentration of the methyl acetate, BH3, raised to some order, and we're going to call that M, times the concentration of the other reactant, which is hydroxide, raised to the order of N. So really, I only have, at this point, to write the rate law, I've got two unknowns. I need to figure out those orders, the M and the N. So what we're going to do is pick two experiments, plug both of them into this rate law, and divide them. It's going to be this huge division sign. Um, so watch this with me. As I look, I'm going to rig this. I'm going to pick two experiments in which one of my reactants here will cancel when I divide them. That means their concentrations have to be the same, so when we divide, they cancel. So looking at this right off, I'm going to choose experiments one and two because the methyl acetate, they have the same concentration. Those, if I divide them, will cancel out to a one. Um, second thing that I do, I look at both of those experiments and I put the largest numbers in the numerator. And here's the reason why. We're going to be dividing and we're trying to find an exponent. I really don't like doing fractions and exponents at the same time. So I put the largest numbers in the numerator. It just helps me with exponents a little bit. It's a little bit easier. Um, so I see that my largest numbers are going to be from experiment two. So here's how I set it up. We are going to do experiment two great big division sign divided by experiment one. Now, I'm just going to plug all of my information into this rate law. So experiment two, the rate law. Experiment two, the rate is 0 0.00069 equals K times the concentration of experiment two, 0 0.05 raised to the M times concentration of the hydroxide 0 0.10 raised to the n. Great. Now I'm going to take experiment one. I'm going to plug that into the rate law. So the rate for experiment one is 0 0.00034 equals k times the concentration of 0 0.01 raised to the m times the concentration of 0 0.05 raised to the n. Okay. Now we can divide. Um, the rate constant will be the same throughout every single trial. So the rate constant, that will cancel. Now I look, is there anything that's identi identical that I can cancel? Ooh, I see it right here. 0 0.05 raised to the M divided by 0 0.05 raised to the M. We were strategic. We did that on purpose. I wanted to cancel one of those exponents so that I'd only have one unknown. So let's go ahead and work this. Uh, 0 0.0039 divided by 0 0.00034 is going to be, what, three? Am I doing that right? No, two, sorry. 
so it's going to be really close to 2 equals now recall this is one of our laws with exponents I could take this and rewrite it as 0.1 divided by 0.05 raised to the n that's the same thing so 0.1 divided by 0.05 is going to give me 2 to the n um, now we have to figure out well what's n 2 raised to what power gives me 2 you know what it is n equals 1 I remember the way that we'd say that is it's first order. So first order. Great. So we just found n, the order of n. We've got it right there. So now we're going to do the whole thing again, and this time I want to find m. So if I want to find m, that's going to be for the methyl acetate, I want to pick two of my trials that will cancel for the n. Now, in all fairness, I do know what N is now. I could plug that in. I could put one and treat that one just like a regular um, power of one exponent and do a little extra algebra. That's great. This just saves me a little bit of math if I can cancel out that N. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. No, you don't have to. And um, I have seen problems before where um, you can't cancel out the second, um, the second reactant so you have to plug in what you found that one just do a little more algebra it's totally fine um, but I am going to most of the time you can pick two trials to cancel out the second reactants so I'm going to pick trials two and three um, and it makes your math just a little bit easier okay so I see trial two and three when I divide the hydroxide that will cancel my n um, so we can have one unknown which will be the m um, then I look and I say, okay, which one has the largest numbers? It's going to be trial three. So I'm going to put that in the numerator. So when it divides, I can get some uh, clean whole numbers instead of fractions. So let's do experiment three, great big division sign, divided by experiment two. And I'm just going to plug it into this rate law. So again, the rate for experiment three, 0 0.00137 equals K times the concentration of the methyl acetate, 0 0.10 raised to the M times 0 0.10, that's my hydroxide, raised to the N. Now, I know what N is. It's a first order. It's a one. I could put one there or N. doesn't matter because it's going to cancel out. Um, experiment two. The rate law for experiment two, okay, my initial rate, that is going to be 0 0.00069 equals K times concentration, 0 0.05 to the M times the concentration of hydroxide right there, 0 0.10 to the N. Okay, now we can just do this algebra. Again, Ks will be the same, so that cancels out. Um, yay! 0 0.10 to the n, that's identical. Remember, we rigged it, so when they divide it, they would cancel. And now I can just do the algebra. We'll have 0 0.00137 divided by 0 0.00069. You could put it in your calculator. We're gonna be really close to two equals, divide this, and remember, um, when I divide this, that's the same thing as taking 0.1 divided by 0.05, all raised to the same power. As long as they're the same power, you can put them in the same quotient. Um, so 0.1 divided by 0.05 is going to be 2 to the m. So then I say, okay, what does m have to be? 2 raised to the m power gives me 2. m will be 1. m equals 1, which is also a first order. So then I can come back and rewrite my rate law. Uh, so rate is going to equal k times the concentration of methyl acetate raised to the first order times the hydroxide raised to the first order. Okay, nice, and there is our rate law. Um, now remember, just a little quick review, um, if I wanted to know the overall uh, rate, uh, overall order of this rate law, you just add those orders, add the exponents, so that would be an overall second order. Let me write this down. Overall second order. And you'll recall that we use the ordinal word. I don't say two order. I say second, like first, second, third, fourth, fifth place. So this is overall second order. Okay. And then you have the rate law. Now follow up questions that you're going to be asking other videos that I want you to watch. 
You will be asked to determine the value of K, so watch that video. You will also be asked to find a new concentration if you change one of the conditions, so also uh, watch that video. Okay, um, next up, you maybe can see how you can do this in your head. So you'll want to watch the video that says determine the rate law by inspection. And then you don't have to do all this math. Like I said, I like doing the math, so I do it. I would say 70% of my AP students still do the math. 90% of my honor students do the math. 30% AP, 10% honors, they see it, they do it in their head, they're, they're great. Um, so here's the math. Don't feel guilty doing the math. It totally justifies a rate law if you have to justify the rate law that you come up with. Uh, but if you can do it in your head, um, it will save you a little bit of time. So take a look at that video. All right, thanks. Have a good day.